Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be the second video in the series for the Automotive Weekly Waveform. And last week we just hooked up to the battery and checked our battery voltage. We started up the vehicle, we let it run for a second. That gave us a minimum voltage capture for what the starter's pulling down on the battery. That gave us a maximum voltage for what our alternator's putting out. But there's more to the starting circuit than that. So in today's video, we are going to be doing a voltage drop test on the battery cables. Um, we're going to do the positive, the negative, and see what our total voltage drop is. Now this is where a multi-channel scope is beneficial because you can do a lot of these steps combined into one test. If you only have a single channel scope, you can still do the test, absolutely. Um, it's just going to take a few more attempts at getting all the waveforms. So a single channel scope, you are going to be checking the test we did last week, our battery voltage while cranking, and then you could check the positive circuit and then the negative circuit, so three tests in total. I'm using my Zeus, so I'm gonna use three channels so we can do it all in one capture. Now, today I'm working on a 2012 GMC Sierra 1500. It's got the 5.3 liter engine, VIN 7, I believe. I'm not sure if that's flex fuel or non. And then it has a single battery setup. Some of these do have a dual battery depending on how people set them up. Single battery, which makes things a little bit easier for us. So when we're doing a voltage drop testing, we want to connect we want to measure the voltage differential on a certain cable. Um, so what we have to do is we have to hook the ground on one side and our positive on the other end of that same cable. Now, typically when we were checking the battery voltage, we were using a 20 volt scale. Well, now we want to use a much smaller scale because we really don't want to see a lot of voltage drop in those battery cables. I mean, those battery cables are pretty big. They should have very low resistance. So we shouldn't see that much drop in them. Um, unfortunately, sometimes you do have drop. I normally start out around half a volt on my scale. Sometimes we do need to bump that up. Um, I guess it would be beneficial to start a little higher in case you have one that's a little higher. Uh, I guess we could start at like a two volt scale. And then that way if we crank it over and we see a lot of voltage drop, then we can, we already have the capture. Um, if we see very minimal or if it looks like we're, you know, below a half a volt and we want to really see that fine detail of that voltage, we can change our scaling from there. But I suppose we'll start on this one with a two volt scale on the channel that we're measuring a voltage drop. So because I'm checking the battery negative system as well as the positive system, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up channel one to battery positive and negative like we did in the last test. And I'm gonna use a second channel to hook up to the engine ground. And that's gonna give me a voltage drop waveform for my negative cable system. Now we can also do the positive system at the same time but we can't zoom in, we can't change our scale down to 0.2 volts because we're measuring the potential from negative on the battery post, so battery ground, to that cable at the starter. So we're gonna we should have very close to the same voltage that we have with the battery. Um, we may have to, without the power of you know, a, a Pico scope where we can do math channels, um, since I'm using the Snap-on, we may just have to use the cursors to see what our voltage difference is between those two channels and do the math ourselves. So on these particular Chevy engines, I normally hook up to the bracket for the alternator. It's a very easy place to hook up. Um, there's a lot of load going through the alternator as well. Um, so if I, if I check there, then I can kind of check like the whole system of, of the ground system, not just what's going to the engine block, but maybe what's going to the alternator as well. So let's go ahead and set up the scope. We're gonna go into scope multimeter. We're gonna to go to lab scope. Now this time, if you do have a multi, multi channel scope, let's go to either two channel or four channel lab scope. If, you're, if you have a two channel lab scope, then 90% of the time I see voltage drop in the negative cable, because um, that's where it hooks up to the ground on the engine. There's normally some rust or chemical reactions between the dissimilar metals. Um, so that's where I normally go first. If I don't see anything there, then I'll check the positive. But since we're using a three channel scope, we'll check both at the same time. I'm going to open up my scope settings. I'm gonna activate channel two and three. And then channel two, that's the one that we're hooked up to engine ground. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go to a two volt scale because honestly, I don't expect to see over like 300 millivolts on a good vehicle. Um, so two volts is kind of extreme. If we're over that, we have a major issue. And at that point, we really don't need to know how much. Uh, we'll, we'll just know that we have a problem. Channel three is for the starter. I have that on the B plus terminal at the starter underneath the engine. Um, I do have a longer test lead hooked up to that. Channel four we're not using right now, so we'll leave that one turned off. Go back to a 200 millisecond scale. And then on, when I do this particular test, 
if, especially if I'm using a GM vehicle where I can hold the gas pedal down, I will do that just to get a longer cranking period before it starts up. Some vehicles will let you do that. It goes into clear flood mode and it shuts off the fuel injectors. So you can crank it for five or 10 seconds without it starting up and really put a load on everything. I tried letting off my foot on the pedal. It didn't start right away. I thought it was gonna start, but normally you can just let off the pedal. It'll start up and then we can get the alternator voltage as well. Hit the stop button. And now we wanna hit the zoom button to zoom all the way back out if you're using the Snap-on scope. If you're using the Pico, you're gonna see everything right away and you can zoom into the fine detail. And just looking at this, uh, this is a mess. We have all kinds of noise going on and our our voltage drop signal on our ground cable looks terrible. I'm actually gonna zoom into our first capture where we were just cranking it. The second part of this waveform looks like the alternator and there's even more noise when that happens. So double, cl double click to zoom in and then I zoomed out a little bit. I'm gonna minimize my scope settings, move my channels around a little bit just to to give myself some organization here. Now channel three and channel one, I'm okay if those overlap because if I line them up perfectly, um, which I can also do here in the setup. Trace number three. Let me see if I can line that right up with number one. I'm just looking at the boxes on the right hand side of the screen. Okay, so those look like they line up just right. Let's exit that. Um, so since the boxes line up at the right side of the screen, they should be the exact same voltage. Um, and it looks like we're very, very close before I started cranking it. We have a little bit of voltage drop, which is apparent by the separation of that blue and the yellow line, uh, which we can go ahead and measure that in a bit. Now the green was our voltage drop on the ground cable. This one is amplified because I was on a smaller scale. So it is gonna take up more of the screen but already I can tell that we have an issue. If I can put a cursor, which we can even look at the min max. Um, let me tap that scope setting button again. Um, my channel two minimum was negative 1.96. So that went below zero. That might've been when the alternator started charging. And my maximum was 1.479. So almost one and a half volts of voltage drop on that ground cable. Now that's, that's not a good sign. Um, one thing that is very common on these newer LS engines is defective cables. So let me zoom out one more screen here. I'm gonna move my waveform slightly and I'm gonna put up some cursors. Show the cursors. That one needs to be over there. Now I'm just looking at the bottom of the screen, looking to where I can you know, sort of max out the voltage on my first cursor. That's gonna show me the highest point for my voltage drop on the ground. And it should give me a good indication of what my voltage was on the other traces as well. Cause the voltage at the battery is gonna drop at the same time that my voltage drop increases if I have high resistance to the cable. Um, second cursor, I'm not too concerned on where it's located. Um, I like to get an idea of after that initial crank and we kind of even out where my voltages are. So some of this is a recap from the last test. And, and some of you guys actually posted captures that were just like this. Um, you went you know, above what our assignment was last week and you already included this, but I understand that some of you are experienced technicians and this is every vehicle that gets a starting test. You just hook up the extra cables to check the ground. So channel one, which is our battery voltage, we dropped down to 9.12 um, during that cranking event. And that's when the first starter first engaged. Once it kind of evened out, we we're at 11.25. Now channel two was our voltage drop test on the ground side of that system. And where my cursor was, we had 1.2. Now if I zoom in really tight detail, it may have been a higher point in there because we know that the maximum was 1.47, which that could have been on the second starting event that I did. But even 1.2 is a fail. And then during our longer period of cranking, we were at 0.452, so a lot less amperage at that point, and we're still losing half a volt in that negative cable. Now on our positive side, 
we still have some issues. Um, surprisingly, more than I expected. I, I haven't had to replace a positive cable on one of these. Now down below, I do have that clamp clipped onto the terminal end on the end of the cable. So I'm not on the stud of the starter. It was a little hard to get to. I was able to get onto that terminal end that's crimped onto the cable really easily. Um, but honestly, most of the resistance is going to be in the cables at the batteries. They have, they went to a different design where they crimp on the battery cable end and they end up getting corrosion in there and there's not really anything you can do to fix it. They are a special type of cable end, so it's really hard to repair it. It's easier just to replace the cable. The dealership actually had the negative cable sitting on the shelf. Now I want to jump over to that second time I started the engine up just to double check, see if I had, you know, more voltage drop at that point, which it kind of looks like I did. Now this is where I just allowed the engine to start up on its own. I was not in clear flood mode and it looks like we were a little bit higher. I don't, we'll zoom in and check it. So that's where our 1.4 volt voltage drop was on the negative cable. Now, one thing I wish Snap-on did is once you place the cursors, I wish you could zoom out and the cursors would stay at that point, um, but they don't. So we'll have to uh, readjust that cursor if we wanted them to have it lined back up at that exact spot. But the other thing I wanted to check is we can have a voltage drop show up, either positive or negative. And once we get over here to where the starter or the alternator kicks in, we actually have the voltage drop going in the other direction. Now, because we know that we have high resistance in that battery cable, that alternator, even though the diodes are supposed to be doing most of the work, um, the battery may not be absorbing as much because the battery acts like a capacitor. It may not be absorbing some of those spikes like it would normally would. But when that alternator is really cranking out right after we start it up, it's, it's working really hard to, to put some juice back in that battery. We have 237 millivolts of voltage drop at that point. And that alternator is probably only putting out maybe 60 amps at that point. Um, we haven't gone into accessories yet, so I'm not going to throw an amp clamp on there to find out. But either way, we know we have a pretty big issue going on with this starting system. And because I just backed out of the screen before saving it, I'm going to take one more capture and I'll put that up there as my image. So for this week's assignment, we're going to check voltage drop for the starting system. So from the battery negative to the engine block or even to the starter case and positive battery terminal down to the positive terminal at the starter. That's going to give us voltage drop for both of those cables. If you have a two channel or one channel scope, you may have to post multiple captures. Now, even with a two channel scope, you can't check the voltage drop on the positive and the negative side at the same time, because we still need that third channel for a reference to what the battery voltage is. If we are checking battery voltage at the starter. Now, real quick, let me show you how to check the voltage drop on that positive cable. If you're using a single channel scope, because our setup won't work for that. So if you are using the U scope, you're going to do things a little bit different. So instead of having anything connected to the negative cable on the battery or the negative post, we are going to hook our ground up to battery positive. This is going to give us a voltage reference at this point. Now our other lead is going to be down at the starter, which I'm not going to move this one all the way down there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off the other channels. So we're only using one channel in the snap on scope. So we had channel three connected to the starter B plus terminal. So that is the single channel I'm going to use. Now, instead of using the 20 volt scale, since I'm hooked up to our battery negative, I'm going to switch this back down to a two volt scale, like what we had when we were checking the engine ground. And then I'll go ahead and start this vehicle up again. So now we are looking at just the voltage drop for that positive lead. Now I suppose we could have inverted this channel to make it go positive like we had before, but it's all right. The scope does go positive or negative, so we can still look and see what we had for the voltage drop. I'm going to go down here so we can see our minimum maximum. So the minimum was 1.5 volts and maximum. It looked like it had a little spike there. Um, so it didn't get a good reading, but one and a half volt drop on the positive cable as well. So this truck is going to need both the positive and negative cables replaced. Okay. So that's how you capture the waveform. If you're using just a one channel scope, um, that kind of wraps this test up. We will build on both of these tests that we've done in the future. So go ahead. And if you haven't joined the Facebook group already, the link down below, click that, join it. Um, week one assignment is up right now on YouTube as well. This is week two. 
So go ahead and post your captures from week two. I know some of you guys already posted similar captures to this, but you have more vehicles coming to the shop, you probably do this test anyways. So go ahead and post another waveform up showing the voltage drop of the starting system. If you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.